Vibrance and saturation. So these two, let's go to a really colorful image right here. All right, so here we go. We've got vibrance and saturation. Vibrance is also a biased slider, meaning that if I go all the way to the left and take out all the vibrance, there's still color in that image, right? And, and so if I go all the way to the right, what the vibrance does is it takes in mind, it says, you know, this red was really saturated to begin with, so I'm not gonna add, set, like, okay, if there's a continuum of this is sort of red and this is really red, it's gonna say, you know, I'm gonna add whatever you put, plus 20, plus 30, plus 40, plus 50, but once you start getting up here, if I keep pushing and compressing, everything's gonna be the same red. So I'm gonna keep a relative distance, even though you're trying to squish this and make it red, 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 it's like, yeah, but you wanna be able to tell the difference between this red and this red, otherwise the detail in your image is gonna be lost. It's also biased in that it doesn't affect skin tones, so that would be kind of your oranges and yellows, as much as it does your blues, like your skies, your green grass. So it's an excellent slider if you're taking on location portraits and you just wanna add a little pop you know, you wanna make that blue sky bluer and the green grass greener, it's an excellent slider to use for that because it won't make your people look really sunburned. All right, in fact, if I back off on that and we look at saturation, and why don't I zoom in on that? So here we've got, um, in fact, let's tap the, um, not the T key, let's tap the Y key. So the Y key shows us a before and after. What I wanted to compare was I wanted to compare vibrance at 100% and saturation at 100%. But you'll notice that when you tap the Y key and you go into this compare, this before and after, let me get rid of the white balance tool. I'll just tap escape to get rid of the white balance tool. When you do this, um, the before and after state, the before state always goes like so far back in history that it's kind of useless. It's like, okay, well, I've made all these other, other adjustments. I only want to compare these two things. So what you can do is you can go to your history state or your history panel, and you'll notice that I've got a lot of states in history here, see how it's going back? It's going back all the way to import. I don't want that. I wanna take a look at two different states that are up here. So I wanna look at vibrance at let's say minus 100. So I just drag and drop it over there. So now I can compare any two states, right? So I say, okay, well, let's say I wanna look at saturation plus 100. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. And then I wanna look at Vibrance at plus 100, okay? Well, I come back to history, and I say, all right, I've got it at vibrance plus 100. I wanna see what saturation is plus 100. So we drag and drop that. And now you can really see the difference, right? So here we have vibrance. See how the reds are, you can still see detail in them, whereas the reds over here, they're really, really going to just way overload, and you can't see the detail as much, okay? So history, you can drag from any state at any point in time. You can also split this differently if you want. So you could do a left-right split, which is kind of nice, because then when you're zoomed in, oh, oh, zoom in, there we go. When you're zoomed in, you can actually move around and see what things would look like in the before and after state. So if I tap the Y key, no, oh, sorry, not the Y key, the V key again, to go black and white, it'll be maybe a little bit more obvious. So you can see, that's what I mean by it split the screen. So that's nice with, when, when retouching and stuff. And then you can also split it top, bottom, if you want to, all right? So just tap the Y key again, zoom back out, all right? And then tap V in order to get that back to color.